Hello and welcome to True Talk Chelsea. This is the number one podcast for all your Chelsea wants and needs. We hope you enjoy. Just a reminder that before Lampard, Chelsea was known to be a club which did not treat its academy players well, did not give them enough minutes, sent them on numerous loan spells. However, this image was completely changed by Frank Lampard last season. And now, Chelsea has become a hub for youth players. We can see that with the likes of Kai Havertz wanting to join Chelsea, who also had interest from other clubs like Bayern Munich and Real Madrid. So, without any further ado, let's list down the five players that were developed by Frank Lampard as manager of Chelsea Football Club. Before starting the video though, I would like to ask you guys to subscribe to our channel for more short videos, long podcasts, loan watches and top quality uh, Chelsea content, make sure you subscribe to True Talk Chelsea. Let's get into the video. Number 5 At number 5, we have the Scottish midfielder Billy Gilmore. That's right, Gilmore was handed his first Chelsea appearance under Frank Lampard. And um, he's actually been pretty impressive. He's only played 17 games though, because majorly because uh, of his young age and the knee injury he had but whenever he's played he's been so so good i think a lo- frank needs to give, be given a lot of credit to play him sometimes over the likes of Jorginho and kovacic and gilmore has been pretty impressive if you look at the games versus uh everton and liverpool and then krasnodar in his champions league debut as well he full debut he got mad of the match in all three games and he said this via Instagram that thank you for giving me an opportunity and for your faith and trust in me. It's been an honour to learn from you, said Billy Gilmore after the departure of Frank Lampard. As I said, Gilmore had some very impressive performances versus likes of Everton and Liverpool in the FA Cup. It was some performance he completely bossed the midfield. I cannot go without mentioning his nutmeg on Fabinho. Also a very impressive full Champions League debut. He looks very good on the ball and I think Lampard must be given a lot of credit to bring him in the first team, give him enough minutes. And yes, it's a very good player to start the list off with Billy Gilmore. Moving on to number four is Callum hudson Odoi. Now, a lot of y'all must be expecting hudson Odoi higher on the list considering his recent form. The only reason I've kept him at four is because of the fact that in this list, we are particularly looking at the players developed by Ram- Lampard. And we will also be going to be taking into account Lampard's influence and role in developing these players. While hudson Odoi has been such a bright spark, it um he actually received his first Chelsea appearances, quite many of them, even before Lampard arrived at the bridge as manager. But hudson Odoi, he's been so good. He's played about 52 games under Lampard, while most of them has have been as substitute appearances. He also has 8 goals and 9 assists in just more than 240 minutes. So that's quite impressive considering the uh, number of minutes he's played. If you actually look at the number of minutes he's played and the goal of involvement, it stands at around 140 minutes per G slash A which is 140 minutes per goal of involvement. Pretty impressive. And uh, and some of very impressive games have been against Bayern Munich, second leg. Well, it was <laughs> not necessarily best game for Chelsea, but Hudson and Doyle looked very bright. Then recently, I mean, he's looked so good against Luton and he, he just came off, made such a good impact. Even against Arsenal, he came off and then provided an assist for Tammy. And definitely, he looks like one for the future. And I'm sure Lampard trusted in him, given him enough chances to show that he has a lot of potential to live up to. Moving on to number three <coughs> is a Chelsea right back, Reese James. Yeah, that's right. Reese James went on loan to Wigan Athletic. However, he returned and was, again was given his first Chelsea appearance under Frank Lampard. Reese James now is ranked as one of the best right backs in the Premier League and he's put in there right in the debate of likes of Trent Alexander-Arnold and Anne Van Bissaka 
in the opinion of m- many pundits and experts, Reese James is even better than the uh, likes of Alexander Arnold. And if you put that in perspective, Trent is one of the best right backs in the world. And he's being directly compared to Reese James. This just shows that how much James has developed as a player. He's made 55 appearances under Frank Lampard, in which he scored three goals. I cannot go without mentioning the amazing, amazing he- goal he scored against Ajax to make it 4 4. Also, had seven assists to his name in about 382 minutes. So, it was a very impressive. Um, start to life for Chelsea at James, for James and one thing I would like to highlight is that he Lampard definitely had a choice to make between James and Aspilicueta and while many Chelsea fans Aspilicueta has been a fan favourite for many Chelsea fans and uh, he's been at the club for a long time now and many Chelsea fans did feel that in such a young squad uh, Aspilicueta would provide a lot of experience and leadership skills However, it's been pretty clear that Aspilicueta has been a second choice right back this season and James has been preferred over him. And a lot of credit for this decision must go to Frank Lampard for backing James, giving him the trust to and preferring him over one of the best defenders to ever play for Chelsea Football Club. So, a lot of credit to Lampard for this and totally impressed how James has developed. He's got amazing, amazing uh, crosses. Uh, good defensively, very solid defensively, actually. Amazing shots. I still remember the goal versus Brighton. One of the best goals I've seen Chelsea score this season. And worthy for number three, Reese James. Moving on to number two is Tammy Abraham. Now, a lot of you all must be thinking that why I have placed Tammy Abraham above Reese James on this list. Well, I would agree that Reese James is currently. Mm, a bit better than Tammy considering their positions but I would the reason which I've put Tammy Abraham above Reese James is because of Lampard and how he has improved Tammy. I would put this in perspective when Lampard had arrived it was Olivier Giroud's best scoring season. He was Europa League top goal scorer and he had a very good impressive run last season and there was Michi Bashuai as well who was doing bits too. So when Frank Lampard arrived, everyone expected him to have Olivier Giroud as his first choice striker and Michi Bashuai as second choice striker. But then it was a game versus Manchester United where Lampard started Tammy Abraham and quite many Chelsea fans were stunned because no one expected Frank Lampard to go with Tammy Abraham. Well, it was a disappointing game that one, but uh, uh, Tammy Abraham has recovered very good from that game and uh, he's went on to score a lot many goals and Lampard does deserve a lot of credit for uh, putting in that faith in Tammy Abraham because he had a lot of competition from as I said Giroud and Batshuayi but to look at his career under Lampard uh, Tammy Abraham has played 72 games and has 29 goals and 12 assists in 400 four thousand and three hundred minutes which is around 105 minutes per goal of involvement which is quite impressive for a striker who does not take penalties so i think uh i still remember the moment was this norwich when tammy scored a double and then he went to frank lampard for celebrating with him so it's been an amazing relation between tammy and frank tammy has done excelled on the lampard and as i said a lot of credit for Tammy's development and giving him enough first team minutes and chances must go to Frank Lampard. Moving on to number one, <laughs> no prizes for guessing. It's the special relationship between Mason Mount and Frank Lampard. Yes, at number one is our most recent club captain, Mason Mount. What should I say about this? I mean, rival fans can banter all day long saying that Mason Mount is. Lampard's son and okay I don't really care about that Mason Mount you can call him Mason Mount as Lampard's son but the fact remains that he has been one of the best players I think in my opinion Mount has been the best player in the Lampard era because of the way he started last season obviously Mason Mount and Lampard came back from Derby both of them did play together 
and then this season mount has been i think chelsea player of the season so far the relationship between two of them has been so good i mean lampard has trusted mount and to be honest he has received his fair bit of criticism for trusting mount so much not only from rival fans but from chelsea fans as well and there was seemingly a bias which lampard had against mason mount but i think mount's recent performances have uh, shut the mouth of all haters and we at true dog chelsea have always been big fans of mason mount we've never doubted him and the way that he's been performing right now has been nothing short of magical and all of the credit i wouldn't even say most of the credit i'd say all of the credit does go to frank lampard i mean frank lampard's first game in charge was mason mount's competitive debut and frank lampard's last game in charge was mason mount's first appearance as chelsea captain first goal in lampard era came by mason mount i think it was a goal um against leicester if i'm not wrong and the last goal as well came by mason mount i think the last premier league goal came by mason mount so it's such a good rap both of both them have and i would also like to highlight the versatility that mount has shown uh, to fit in lampard system i mean he's gone playing from wide left wide right uh, in the forward three i mean and he also played in the number 10 position he's played as a 8 in the midfield three and the last game he also played in a pivot two along with an uh, billy gilmore as a quite defensive midfielder to be honest so the versatility shown by mount and the confidence shown by lampard to trust mount to play all these different positions at such an inexperienced age but yet with such maturity and grace has been amazing and just to read out some of the stats mason mount has actually played a lot of games versus lampard uh, under lampard i mean because they also were part of the derby team so they've played 124 games together and which mason has scored 22 goals with 18 assists but obviously these include the ones at derby county as well if you want to look at just chelsea the only games that mason has played has been 80 games under frank lampard extremely impressive because you would look at the chelsea lineup and you would feel that mason hardly misses a game which is top level work rate and top level fitness required for someone of his age and the 80 games he also has 11 goals to his name and 12 assists and he's been just so amazing lot of work rate lot lot of energy and amazing set pieces my favorite moment for mason mount has been that free kick against wolves we had to win anyhow to secure ucl football and mason mount comes up with such a good free kick and then we could see the instagram post in which mason mount uh, as a child demonstrated how to take a free kick and then uh he actually followed the same technique and then he got the goal against wolves so it's been such a magical journey of lampard and mount unfortunately it has come to an end but mount is still here we believe him to have two killer or uh, almost official uh, isn't official by the time we are recording this but might as well be until it's uploaded but yes i hope that mount continues to good form even though it's under a different manager and i also wish frank lampard an amazing managerial career ahead and i really hope that at some point he returns to chelsea football club that's all that we have for this video thank you for watching till the end until next time i'm palash signing off